welcome to Success in Medicine. I'm Dr. Samir Desai. Are you preparing for a family medicine residency interview? If so, congratulations. Family medicine residency programs are receiving more applications than ever before for a small number of positions. The fact that you've made the cut indicates that the program is very interested in you as an applicant. To give you a sense of how far you've come, consider some numbers. In a recent application cycle, the Department of Family Medicine at the Texas Tech University in El Paso received approximately 2,600 applications. Following a review of these applications, approximately 65 applicants were invited for interviews. At Tacoma Family Medicine in Washington State, the program indicates that they interview approximately 100 applicants for their eight available first-year positions. The interview is the most important factor in the family medicine residency selection process, and extensive interview preparation is essential. You, of course, have to be ready to answer a variety of questions, but you also have to be ready to ask your own questions. Every interviewer will give you the opportunity to ask questions. In some cases, you'll only have time to ask one or two questions. But in other cases, the interviewer may choose to give you a significant amount of time to ask your questions. We've even heard of some faculty members beginning their interview with the question, what questions do you have about our program? Therefore, you must be ready to ask lots and lots of questions and to do so at any point of the interview. During mock interview sessions with family medicine residency applicants, I'm often asked, Dr. Desai, what are some good questions to ask interviewers? My belief is that you should ask questions that you are sincerely interested in. An interviewer shouldn't feel that you're just working your way down a list that you found. And yet, that's what many interviewers are left feeling. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you shouldn't use a list. For example, if you're using our book, The Successful Match 2017, you'll find a long list of potential questions to ask. But as you go through that list, determine which questions are most important to you. Then figure out a way to ask it in a memorable and compelling manner, preferably in a way that highlights something important about you, your interests, or your future in the specialty. Another way to stand out is by asking questions about hot topic areas in family medicine that are of interest to you. Let me give you some examples. I'll start by introducing an important topic or issue in family medicine and then discuss a question you can ask about it. Let's begin by talking about procedures in family medicine. As a family medicine residency applicant, part of what may have drawn you to the field is the opportunity to perform procedures. Perhaps you envision yourself practicing family medicine in a rural area. If that's the case, you may not have access to specialists, and it may be particularly important that you acquire strong procedural skills. At the end of your training, you hope to be comfortable and confident in your ability to perform a variety of procedures. With that being the case, you can ask questions about procedures during residency training. Many applicants will say something to the following effect. Dr. Patel, are there opportunities to perform procedures as a resident in your program? Or they may say, Dr. Patel, can you tell me about the procedures residents take part in at your program? Now, there is nothing wrong with these questions, but we can make them much stronger if we give the interviewer some idea of why this question is important to you. In doing so, we can transform the question to something like this. Dr. Patel, my hope is to practice family medicine in the area of Texas where I grew up. This is a very rural area with a lot of underserved patients. The area lacks specialists, 
so it'll be important for me to become proficient with a variety of procedures. I was wondering if you can tell me about the procedural training that is available in your program and how residents can make the most of these opportunities. In providing some context to the question that is asked, this applicant has communicated some very important points. We know that he is interested in the underserved and we know that he has plans to practice in a rural area. If those factors are important to the program, by bringing them up, he reminds the interviewer that he's a good fit for the program. From the interviewer's perspective, it now makes a lot of sense why this applicant is asking a question about procedures. It feels like the applicant has a sincere interest in learning the answer to the question. Now let's move on to a different issue in family medicine. A very important issue that has to do with ensuring that patients have a smooth transition from the inpatient to outpatient setting. We know that this is an important time and that if the transition period is handled well, that it can make a huge difference in terms of patient outcomes and readmission rates. This is a very hot topic right now and hospitals are putting into place programs and interventions that improve patient safety as well as outcomes during this period of transition from the inpatient to outpatient setting. Recognizing the importance of educating residents about how to safely transition patients, programs are using a variety of methods in their efforts to educate learners. Some methods that are in place include didactic lectures, case-based workshops, and role-playing. Some programs are even sending residents out into the homes of recently discharged patients to better understand the challenges patients are facing in adjusting from the hospital to the home environment. Other programs are encouraging their residents to perform quality improvement projects to enhance patient safety at this time of transition. There are also efforts underway to show residents how a team-based approach, which includes non-physician personnel, can impact readmission rates, outcomes, and safety. Now that we have this background in mind, we can create the following interview question. Dr. Strong, I've been reading a lot about patient safety issues, and I know a difficult time for patients is when they move from the inpatient to outpatient setting. How can residents work with attendings and other support staff in your program to safely discharge patients so that they are more likely to do well and hopefully not be readmitted? What's nice about this question is that it indicates to the interviewer that you've been reading about a very important issue and that you are committed to partnering with their staff to reduce readmission rates and enhance patient safety. Another question you can ask has to do with interprofessional teams. This is another hot topic in family medicine. In fact, the ACGME encourages collaboration in family medicine residency programs between residents and other professionals, including, but not limited to, social workers, discharge planners, pharmacists, and others. That's what we mean when we use the term interprofessional teams. You can ask about opportunities to work with non-physician personnel and how these personnel are incorporated into the learning process and patient care. For example, an increasing number of family medicine programs are utilizing clinical pharmacists in the education of their residents. In some cases, they function as a family medicine residency faculty member. They may precept residents alongside family medicine physicians, they may deliver lectures, they may provide feedback to learners, and they may provide observation of resident patient encounters. Having such personnel involved in your education can certainly be beneficial to you. So you could ask the following interview question. Dr. Merriman, I noticed that in your outpatient continuity clinics, that you have on-site pharmacists, social workers, and behavioral medicine experts. 
Could you tell me if these professionals are involved in resident education? And if so, what are some of the ways in which they interact with residents? So there you have it, three important areas in family medicine and some examples of questions you can ask in these areas. Note that these are not the standard questions that residency applicants ask, but by asking questions of this nature, you can succeed on several different levels. First, these types of questions can communicate fit between you and the program. Second, you come across as someone who is knowledgeable about important and hot topics in the field. Third, you stand out. Imagine if you're an interviewer and you interview 10 people, all of whom ask the same questions on that particular day. Who stands out? That's right, nobody. But if you mix some general questions with these specific questions, then you could be the one who, at the end of the interview day, is recognized for the quality of questions that were asked. So make this an important part of your interview preparation. Give it the attention it deserves so that you can get important information about the program. In doing so, you may just succeed in making an even stronger impression on the program. Isn't that what you're looking for? I want to wish you the best of luck in your family medicine residency interview. And in closing, remember that there are 150 plus pages of interview prep in our book, The Successful Match 2017. You'll also find additional resources at our website, thesuccessfulmatch.com. Until next time, I'm Dr. Samir Desai.